So, you remember this guy, right? And also this guy. Two beloved Super Sentai characters, Zox, two Kaiser from Zenkaija, and Taro, Don Mamoitro from Don Brothers. Well, do you know that they actually had a little bit of a collab? They actually starred in a cute, loving, spicy BL called My Personal Weatherman. Well, yeah, I watched it and it's amazing. It's a BL I need to talk about or I'll explode! Mainly in admiration for these two actors, Higuchi Kyoho and Masahiko Atsuki but also because I'm a total BL fan and haven't really brought it up yet on the channel. So let's see if I can find some new fans while also educating my current viewers. Also, uh, sorry if this content isn't for you, but it may be for someone else. So please be respectful and enjoy. This is also the first installment of Technically Toku, a new series I'm starting where I get to talk about everything technically toku. So that might be technically toku in effects or technically toku in anime or technically toku in BL, I guess. And yes, I did start this series ages ago. It never came to fruition. So here it is. Anyway, Keza Henshin. Now, this is a video I didn't think I would make just yet, but here we are. Definitely not for kids, <laughs> um, but you have now been warned. BL, in other words, boys love or even yaoi, is a genre of Japanese media centered around two main leads who fall in love. Japan is known for its BL content, backed up with the fact that Japan is the origin of yaoi manga, which of course is a massive influence on BL content. Funnily enough though, small tidbit here, Thailand is the biggest producer of BL content as the government is trying to share that being gay is fine. So there you go, a government actually doing something good for once. Sometimes it can be very vanilla and hinted at, so pretty much all toku bromances. And on the other hand, it could be a range of spiciness. And to add to the spice, if you would believe it, many Togo actors have started with or go after into BL dramas from Tokusatsu Productions. This is called the Tokusatsu BL Pipeline. And yes, this is real. Your favorite Tokusatsu stars have most likely been in a BL drama in some point in their career. Well, not all of them, but definitely a huge percentage. For example, Naito Tsurichio from Kamen Rider Saber is in Senpai, I'm in Love, alongside Seito Toshiki, Come and Ride a Brave. Another example, Old Fashioned Cupcake, stars Takeda Kyohei, who is best known as Atoya Kurenai from Come and Ride a Kiva, and Kazumi Sawatari from Come and Ride a Build. The final example, to just to prove a point here of how many actors follow this route, the J drama called A Man Who Defies the World of BL from 2021 has these actors from these toku shows. The main character is Inukai Atsushiro, Come and Ride a Build. And those who make an appearance are the following. Yutaro, Hitoshi from Kamen Rider Revice, Shiono Akahisa, Soji from Kyoryoja, Ito Asahi, Lupin Red from Lupin vs Lupat, Kuriyama Wataru from Garo, Kitamura Ryo from Geats, Hama Shogo, Lupin Blue again from Lupin vs Lupat, Kobayashi Ryota is Amazon Mole, Sonagawa Shuya, Kamen Rider Hirobi, Soji Kyohei, Kirame Silver, Togashi Eji, Kamen Rider Kenzan, and the list goes on and on. If you want me to do a full on video about the Tokusatsu BL pipeline, about which characters have been in a BL before or after their Toku shows, let me know, cause I would be happy to do it. Don't throw me with a good time. And I may be happing a certain Toku tuber already on this topic. But back to the fact that Tukaiser and Doma Moitaro both star as the main leads in this BL. I had to make a video out of it. That is my Toku win. Does it count? Is it technically Toku? Yeah, that might get old quick, but here we go. <laughs> Either way, I wanted to share my thoughts on this show as it's been a while since I've watched a BL and I am using this as my way in and a way to connect to other BL fans out there. So hiya! Please say hi in the chat if you are new here from the BL world. If you wish to watch this show, please do, but I will be going through the first episode here so use this as a motivator to watch a honestly cute attack J-drama with extra spice. So let's get into it. The synopsis is as follows. Popular handsome man and weather forecaster Segasaki is actually a tyrant at home. Yo, an erotic manga artist in a tight spot knows this very well. This is because the two of them are living together. More than that, it's because he cooks and cleans for Segasaki. To no surprise, in exchange for being provided food, he must obey everything that Segasaki says. What comes from such a contract? 
What a synopsis, a perfect BL storyline. Now onto the show. As the synopsis says, we are introduced to this dynamic of a perfect, popular and handsome Segasaki. He was a weather forecaster on the show Everyday Weather. And who was watching him every day but Yo, an erotic manga artist who lives, cooks and cleans for this guy. And as you guessed it, they live together after an agreement was made at university. And now he must do what Sakasaki demands in order for free food and board and time to concentrate on his manga work. When Sakasaki returns home, he is in fact a menace. Or so Yo thinks demanding food to be ready for his return and clothes to be cleaned. Yo complains to his manga artist friend, Mansan about how he hates Sakasaki while they both watch the show. However, despite his arguments, he can't help but tenderly draw his face over and over, stating that he just has the perfect face. Yo sees Sakasaki's actions as demanding, controlling and rude, with no kindness behind them at all. However, Sakasaki is just a little jealous, that's all. Just look at his face! If you haven't worked it out yet, this show has many miscommunications, but that drama and angst is what we love in BL. However, it is sad that Sakasaki so obviously cares for him, as we see in a flashback, his voice soft and caring. And look at his face and his smile! Back to the present. Present, he returns and gets close to Yo, making him shy and timid. <laughs> the jealousy. But Yo doesn't see it that way, because while during dinner, Segasaki demands he grabs the soy sauce, even though it's right next to him. But Segasaki just wants to touch him, be close to him as he watches from afar. Also, an indirect kiss? Are you kidding me? Again, getting close up to his face, trying every way to get his attention. Again, Yo doesn't see it that way, unfortunately. Again, annoyed at his strange actions, complaining at how close he gets, but you can see that he wants more. All this is building up to the reveal that he's actually loved Sagasaki from the very beginning, but he can't admit that. Of course he can't admit that. Just waiting for a sunny day so that they can be one again. This is literally true, and this is literally the basic premise of the show. Due to another miscommunication, they only have spicy times when the sun will be out the following day. And due to this, when Sakasaki says on the show that tomorrow will be sunny, they both know what that means. Yo gets weak and fuzzy when he hears the word sunny. And I mean I would too if he said this to me. Just look at him. He's so pretty in this show. I, I genuinely can't get over it. And I also can't get over the fact that this is Taro and Zox. But like, they're so different. It just proves how good these actors are. The day continues and tomorrow will in fact be sunny. And you know what that means. Spicy tear. But before that, Sekisaki demands curry. And Yo returns to the shop to buy more curry cubes. Yo complaining about the embarrassment from returning again to the shops. Oh, he's just socially anxious. I get that, Yo. But he still does it for Segasaki. And that makes him happy. Getting close again in anticipation, but still complaining about how it's seafood curry and not beef. Though Sekasaki doesn't mean to be rude, he doesn't help himself, does he? But they continue with anticipation through the meal, both knowing what tomorrow's sun means. This scene of them just eating back and forth sounds boring in concept, but you can see the way they look at each other. The silence, the tension is palpable. And then spicy time starts quickly. Yo trying to wash the dishes, but Sekasaki knows what he wants. The spice starts, and if you like it extra spicy, like ghost pepper spice, then this is the show for you. It doesn't show anything graphic, so I guess it's not technically ghost pepper spice, but the whole show doesn't show anything too, um, well, it isn't a prono, okay? But kissing and caressing ensues, and the camera cuts just before they get too far. This had me going crazy, but we jump forward anyway to the morning after, with the sun shining through as Yo watches over Sakasaki, inspecting every part of his face lovingly. Confused about why it only happens when it's sunny, he goes to touch his face, but jolts back to turn over when Sakasaki stirs awake. He turns over to cuddle, as we cut to more of this conversation from uni. How Yo would have to stop making manga as he can't support that lifestyle and job. But Sekasaki, so obviously wanting to support him however he can, tells him that he will help him and to live with him. He knows Yo wants to pursue a job as a manga artist and is willing to do that for him, if he follows some rules. It's frustrating as he clearly cares for Yo, but both of them can't express their truth. Well, Yo can't, but that smile from Sakasaki is 
quite telling. Three years later and here we are back to the present, where Yo works on the household chores as well as his manga. Still not fully understanding Sekasaki's intent or purpose, telling himself not to get too carried away. But to his credit, when you walk in, say you're not going to be back till late and abruptly leave, I understand his thinking. I mean, I'm anxious and socially awkward too, so this, w this would be me. I am Yo in this situation, unfortunately. <laughs> But then a literal storm hits. The sunny weather is gone with the rainy season coming in as Yo stands there realizing what this means or lack thereof. He smacks his cheeks, not those cheeks, and tries to convince himself that he will be fine without it for a while. And with a steamy end credits, the episode ends on a sort of cliffhanger. When will the sun rise again? Will Yo be able to cope? And when will they understand each other? I won't ruin the rest of the show for you, but there's seven more episodes like this, so there's a lot to see. In the rest of the show, we get some real spicy moments, all adding to this drama of miscommunication, bad timing, jealousy, and smexy scenes, as they try to understand each other. We also learn about how they met and the truth to their love for each other. What they admire about the other. Drunk snuggles ensue, heated arguments are had, jealous rivalry is felt, but all in all, Yo finally starts to realize Sekasaki's true intentions behind his offer. And we learn just how oblivious Yo is, but also how kinky these two are. And thus ends a beautiful BL that should be enjoyed to the fullest. It leaves you feeling fuzzy and makes you wonder if I need to start shipping Don Momoitaro and do Kaiser from now on. No, Taro and Sonoya are still the thing. But these two actors, Higuchi Kyohei and Masahiko Atsuki, did an incredible job. Well acted, well presented, and beautifully filmed. And that's to the team. I think the team is mainly female, so like, absolutely. I felt all the moments of tension, laughed at all the funny moments, and enjoyed all the spice. Especially that last episode. Woo, that was some Carolina Reaper level spice. But experience it for yourselves if you're still watching. I was sucked in by their chemistry, felt for them in all these moments, and wished for their happy endings, which is what you want in a BL. To be honest, this BL covers all the basics of a great BL then some. And if it's not obvious, I would recommend the watch. I just thought, am I now known as the British chicken Fujoshi BL loving Togutuber? Fine, fuck it, I'll take that role. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you want to watch it, please go check it out. And if you have any questions, please ask down below. But again, remember to be respectful, please. Also, if you guys like this sort of video, then please do not hesitate to tell me in the comments and I'll try to make more videos like this. Anyway, see you guys in the next Technically Toku or just a general video. Anyway, keza henshin, matane! Thank you so much for letting me just ramble. I hope this video does well, because actually, I was writing this video and it came out so quick. I don't know what it was, but I was just very passionate about it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll chat to you guys next time. Bye!